Hello and welcome to the Calumet Wilderness with Sam Love. I'm your host, Sam Love. Uh, I wish I could say that I have been snug as a cat in a blanket on a pillow, but I have been working outdoors the past four days now, so the last thing I want to do is be outdoors. No, I think what I'd rather be doing is showing you another useful mapping tool, topographic maps. Topographic maps have a lot of uses, but before I get into all those, let's talk about the one I'm going to use here, topographic-map.com. It's free. It's really simple. The one kind of strange thing, you think that's a search bar right there? It's not. It doesn't do anything. So if I want to use this to study the ancient landscapes of the Calumet region, what I do is just go down to the Chicago map, click that, and then wait for it to load in and just sort of orient myself from there. If you look over to the right, you can see that elevation is color-coded, and that's scales, so it's really easy. You can notice some of the familiar features, the Sag Valley, Blue Island, so focus here on the region. Another thing I really like about this map, you can reposition. There are very few paper maps that show both Illinois and Indiana in the Calumet region, so this is ideal for that. And just about got it centered here. And there is our region and the immediate environs around it. Well, you can very clearly make out the Valparaiso moraine to the south, and then the Tinley moraine, which is the younger moraine to the north of that. And then north of the Tinley moraine, there is our low-lying Calumet region, once part of Ancestral Lake Chicago. And if we zoom in some more, we can again start changing the relief markers to get a better sense of some of the ancient uh, shorelines that characterize the Calumet region. At the bottom, you can make out the old Tinley Moraine as it runs through Merrillville. And to the north, you can see the edges of Hobart Island. We'll take a deeper look at that in just a little bit. You can even see evidence of the Griffith Spit, which was a series of low sandy ridges. And you can see the old Calumet shoreline along which runs Ridge Road. And then moving farther north, you can trace out, as it loads in, the uh, High Tolleston shoreline. That's the uh, Gary City dump right there. But you can trace that ancient shoreline as it curves north into South Holland, what is the Sand Ridge Nature Preserve today. So as you play with the orientation, the elevation scale changes. It's all relative to what you have in view there. So you can kind of trace that High Tolleston shoreline moving uh, northwest into Illinois there. But as we keep moving the map to the west, you'll see what happens. It will uh, change the color coding. A little harder to trace there. So if, you, if it's hard to read, you can just kind of zoom in and out until you get something that's really well defined. Still, I find this so much easier in the old paper contour maps. I actually had a college geology assignment that required us to go to the library, pull out those paper maps, fold them correctly, and find certain points. So, so much easier this is. Well, here we have a very well-defined view of Old Hobart Island, running from about 56 in Broadway and Merrillville, northeast up to about 40th in Wisconsin in Hobart. Again, this is an ancient geological feature, but maybe about 14,000 years old, an end moraine that was a small island in Lake Chicago. And if we zoom in a little bit more, this is another really cool feature. You can actually pinpoint specific elevations. So let's check out where near where I grew up. Zoom in here. Let that load and get defined. So if we click on the block I grew up on, we can see here the elevation is 663 feet. And if we scroll down to the end of the block, 652. So only 11 feet, but when you're a kid and you've been playing all day, that's quite a climb. Trust me. Topographic maps are a study of the relief features, whether they are natural or artificial. And they can also include, you know, a lot of information about the human communities around them. So, you know, they're useful for construction, planning, um, agriculture, logistics, transports, all of these things. You know, if you're going to buy a bit of land, you might want to know where the low areas are uh, to see where you're going to be taken on water possibly. So, of course, our purpose here, we're using them to interpret these past landscapes. And another one I wanted to look up 
was Plum Creek Valley, which is a Cook County Forest Preserve just outside of Dyer. And if you caught that episode, you remember I wasn't certain if these were sand dunes or glacial moraines that I was walking on. Well, the topographic map can help me visualize this. And we can see here that it's just on the north end of the Tinley Moraine. And that uh, the blue low-lying areas, that's Old Lake George. We learned about that. So zooming in here on the Nature Preserve, we can see quite a difference in elevation in that area. And you definitely see that when you go out there hiking. Well, I want to leave the Calumet region real quickly here and just show you one more great use for this. I mean, I think this is an art in and of itself. So let's move up here to the Driftless region or the Driftless area of Wisconsin. Zoom in a bit near where the Wisconsin River and the Mississippi meet and just, just spectacular. I'll leave you with this. I'm going to shut up now. I think this is so beautiful.